I'm the bitterest tonight. Still, I will love. Still, I will love when I'm tired and hungry and we're in a fight. Still, I will love. Still, I will love as we change and we grow, as we ripen and rot. Still, I will love. Still, I will love when nothing turns out quite the way that we thought. Still, I will love. Still, I will love you. When I'm scared to lay bare all the pain. Still I will love, still I will love at our bravest and weakest, our worst and our best. Still I will love, still I will love when we lose all our hair and our teeth and our minds. Still I will love, still I will love when the scenery falls and I mess up my lines. Still I will love I make a promise I make a vow To myself, to you, to everyone Right now When the world tries to tear us Apart at the seams Life makes it hard to keep Chasing our dreams when we're messy and weepy and feeble and old when we don't have a clue what the future will hold. Still, I will love. Thank you. We're already harmonizing. <laughs> We're bonding. Um, hi, hi, hi. Oh my gosh, Joe's Pub. I've been here the last two nights. This is my third night, and um, I'm so, yeah. I, it's so, man, I've been thinking about it for so long, and it's so nice to actually like be here in the moment with all of you. I've been imagining you in my living room, and now you're in front of me. It's great. Um, I, until this week, I hadn't played at the pub uh, since September 2019. Um, yeah, it's been a really normal, couple years uh, uh, and I've been so pumped because I love this place I love this place I love this piano I love the very intimidating wall of photos of all the legends who have played here um, but the thing I've really missed the most I think is the Joe's Pub french fries <laughs> who's having them they what is so special I can't it's hard to describe there's just something there's they're amazing and I I like to like have a reward waiting for me, and so I haven't had them all week, and tonight is my night. <laughs> I'm gonna have those for rise. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, thank, you so, thank you for the show for me. But I'm gonna have them. But I'm really psyched for the shows. Mm -hmm. I've also been um, a little nervous, just because it's been so long since I've played, and uh, I can be like really mean to myself in my own head sometimes. I don't know about any of you. I have like a really nasty, mean, petty, judgmental little inner critic like front row seats my life up here. Anyone else, any other perfectionists in the house? Yeah, let's, let's, let's change that. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get better at it this year. So um, I wrote this little song to kind of like be another voice to counter that like mean voice in my head. Uh, and so before I play the rest of my set, I'm gonna play it because I need, I need to tell it to myself and maybe it'll do something for you too. Please, please, please be kinder to yourself. Please. 
please, please, please be kinder to yourself. The world ain't always gonna be kind to you. So whatever you do, please, please, please be kinder to yourself. Please, please, please be patient with yourself. Please, please, please be patient with yourself. The world ain't always gonna take time for you. So whatever you do, please, please, please be patient with yourself. You'd never be this mean to your friends. So why don't you sit yourself down and make amends? And please, please, please be careful with yourself. Please, please, please be careful with yourself. So please, 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 oh, please, 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 be careful with yourself, be patient with yourself, God damn it, be kinder to yourself. You're never on time. The sound of your snoring could be considered a crime. But out of everyone I've ever met, honey, I hate you the least. Honey, I hate you the least. The people I come across. Rub me the wrong way. They've either got much too much, or much too little to say. Still, out of everyone I've ever met, honey, I hate you the least. Honey, I hate you the least. Stubborn as anything, but still I hope you hate everybody else a little more. Cause honey, without you, I would be a toast. You're last on my shit list. That's why I love you the most. So out of everyone. you the least honey I hate you the least honey I hate you honey I hate you honey I hate you the least thank you um that song is off my new album songs of the Grey too um oh, thanks and uh, these next couple are as well. And this next song, it's um, a holiday song, but it's not like the Christmas holidays, although every year that comes around, and I'm like, I should really finally write a Christmas song like every good little Jewish songwriter. Um, but there's so many, and there's so many good ones, so I was like, why don't I pick a different holiday with a less like saturated songbook? So this, it's not seasonally appropriate, it's not for a while, but this is my song for Father's Day. There are so many fathers to celebrate, old, departed, and new. 
If you have or had a wonderful day, this song is not for you. This one's for people who every Father's Day feel like they want to throw up. To each of us born, to a dad who blew all the chances he had to show up. Toxic and estranged, he cannot be changed, but still, the yearly reminder is always a thrill. So here's to the fathers who fit the spill. Happy Father's Day, Father's Day. It's about time that we all admit on Father's Day, Father's Day. Plenty of papas are pieces of shit. If you can't just sweep that away, you're not alone on Father's Day. You're not alone on Father's Day. If the annual ads for the best gifts for dads fill you with anger and dread, if you are grieving a difficult dad, whether he's living or dead. If when others mention him, it feels like a phantom in his sore. This holiday might be a little less hard if Hallmark came out with an honest card for Father's Day, Father's Day, saying thank you for teaching me how not to be. Father's Day, Father's Day, saying have a nice time with your new family. If that's what you'd rather say, you're not alone on Father's Day. You're not alone on Father's Day. You're not alone on Father's Day, Father's Day. If you're debating what you want to do for Father's Day, Father's Day, no one can make that decision but you. So put down your phone, breathe, or pray. Take some time to not be okay. Buddy, I promise I feel the same way. You're not alone on Father's Day. You're not alone on Father's Day. You're not alone on Father's Day. Thank you. Should I, should I, should I? Should I have a kid? Would it be the greatest or the stupidest thing I ever did? Would my world expand or shrink? Would my heart explode or sink? Is motherhood a blessing or a trap? I don't know what to think. Should I, should I, should I, should I have a kid? Would it blow my mind or make me blow my lid? I like my work, I like my house, I like my body, I like my spouse. Would a baby burn them all down in flames? I might never be able to doze. Would it be my miracle or my mistake? Would I repeat my parents' patterns that I've tried so hard to break? Am I ready? Will I ever be? Could I become as committed a mom as my mom was to me? If I, if I, if I, if I have a kid, what if something awful happens to them? God forbid. I'm so scared of what I'd lose. But is fear a poor excuse? Will the grass grow ever greener on whichever side I do not choose? Should I, should I, should I? Should I, should I, should I? Should I, should I, should I? Should I, should I?
So text yes or no to 64433. <laughs> and then we'll tally. Last night, the voting was really lopsided. My mother was here, so she voted eight times. Um, no. Uh, it's so, I really appreciate it. Like at a venue like Joe's Pub, you're all eating these delicious fries and all this stuff. And like, I know I play a lot of like quiet songs and it's, so, it's like the sensitive, del you're like, I'm not trying to bite too loud. It's really, I, I see you and I appreciate it. But also enjoy your food and it's fine. <laughs> Don't stress out too much. I really, it's like, we can get through this together. Um, <laughs> this next song is from a musical of mine that after a long pandemic delay, we finally got to do across the hall at the Newman Theater called Suffs. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, so, and I kind of want to play a uh, brand new song from it that I've written since we did that run. Because, yeah, because fun thing, you, when you write musicals, you never finish them, ever. There, it's this, yeah. Um, no, I mean, it, it's great, it's great, I chose this. Um, but, um, <coughs> but uh, yeah, this song, I mean, nothing will tell you that like a song isn't quite right than having to perform it yourself eight times a week in front of an audience. You're like, this is not the right song. But I, so I came out of that run really excited to write this next song, which, uh, I'll try and keep it brief. I love to talk about suffrage for a long time and nerd out, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna condense it. So this is just uh, Alice Paul, who's our main character, our protagonist. She, there's so much to say about her, but she was a real person. She's a girl from New Jersey. Uh, she, oh, yes, New Jersey suffrage. Um, she, uh, yeah, so many things, but she was, uh, in 1917, she led the charge on picketing outside the White House gates. The suffragists were the first American citizens to pioneer that kind of nonviolent direct action outside of the White House specifically. And uh, they were there every single day, and then they were eventually arrested, but the, the Wilson administration couldn't really justify an arrest because allegedly there's a constitutional right to uh, assemble. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they had to make it up. So they're like, you're obstructing traffic. And so 168 women were imprisoned for uh, obstructing traffic outside the White House gates and were put in prison for sentences of up to six months. So Alice is in there. She decides to up, yeah. She decides to up the ante by going on a hunger strike and they all start hunger striking, and uh, the, the administration tries to tamp down on that. It gets really ugly, there's force feeding. It's, I'm sorry to tell you this while you are eating, but um, it gets really dark, and they, they put Alice in solitary confinement because she's clearly the leader, and she's creating a problem for them strategically. She's doing a great job at it. And then the Wilson administration has the bright idea to, to try and deal with her by sending a psychiatrist to uh, examine her sanity and to try and get him to diagnose her with hysteria. And so hysteria was this made-up disease that afflicted only women. And um, some, some, symptoms, uh, some symptoms from a real 1917 medical journal are a failure to marry and conceive, um, verbal displays of opinions in public, um, basically everything I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so they send her because at the time, all that it would take to permanently and voluntarily commit a woman to an insane asylum for the rest of her life was the signature of one psychiatrist saying she had hysteria. I know, it should still be like that. Um, <laughs> dark. Um, this is not a funny song. Um, but she, <laughs> joke says, I can make that joke. I won't. But um, yeah, so we know that the psychiatrist uh, visited her and we know that they had a conversation in the middle of the night and that afterwards he refused to diagnose her with hysteria and refused to go along with Wilson's scheme. And, but we don't really know what was said in that encounter. And so I've been like, what happened in there, in that solitary cell? What did Alice say to this guy that made him like believe in her humanity on some level when he questioned her sanity? And it just got me thinking like all the times in my life I've been called crazy and difficult. I don't know if any women in this crowd can relate. Um, and you know, over there we were doing the show when the SCOTUS decision was leaked and Roe v. Wade was overturned and that made us feel insane in this whole different way. And and, and just recently, like around the world, there's so there's women fighting for their rights uh, in Iran and the incredible revolution that's happening over there. And 15 Iranian women went on a hunger strike in Khatoui prison in Tehran just this month. And so it's just all these fights that are happening now, a century ago, a century later, we're all swirling around in my mind thinking about what Alice might have said when this doctor questioned her sanity. You think I'm insane? Well, maybe it's true. You'd have to be out of your mind to fight like I do. I know I'm intense. It's just how I cope in a world that's gone crazy. 
Am I crazy to hope All I've ever wanted Is to change things for the better For my mother, for my friends For every loud little girl like me For the freedom that I dream of think I'm insane, certifiably nuts. You call it hysteria, I call it guts. Is it so insane to want my own choice? Wouldn't you be hysterical if you had no voice? change things for the better for my mother for my friends for every loud little girl like me i know i made a million mistakes along the way but if it's all been for nothing all our heartache every day if our fighting and hoping and dying has all been in vain and I'll go insane I'll go insane I'll go insane Entrance applause, little guy. We love you. You love. We love you. I have a really healthy relationship with this accordion. Um, uh, so, yeah, accordion, accordion. The patron saint of Joe's Pub. You'll notice behind you there's an accordion there. Um, I always wanted to see, like, I, whenever I see that accordion, because it's just like all I can see when I'm playing, it's right in my view, it's like, I just want to see a Pixar animated short where this accordion, like, comes to life when everyone leaves and, like, finally gets to, like, share its songs. So. Oh wait, should we should we pitch this? Should we? Who's there? Okay, great. I'll talk to you after. Um, but uh, ten years ago, I auditioned for a show called Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. Uh, yeah, I think we have our, some Ars Nova in the house. That show started at Ars Nova, um, and I went to the audition, and they were like, "Shana, we know you play piano, but this role uh, actually requires the actor to play accordion. Do you, do you know how to play accordion too?" And I was like, "Oh yeah." Um, I did not. I did not know how to play accordion. And I really think I just didn't expect to get the job. And I did, and then I got to be in that beautiful, amazing show and had to learn accordion real fucking fast uh, and play it eight times a week. And it has just, over the last 10 years, become the joy of my life. I've just never expected it, to this instrument, to arrive. I don't know, it was so unexpected. And I've gotten to just like run around playing it in shows all over town for the last 10 years. Um, and so I think the takeaway from that story is lying will get you ahead. Um, <laughs> That is what I usually tell students who ask me for advice. Um, no, just kidding. But uh, I thought it'd be fun tonight to play the first song I ever wrote on this accordion. And when I was talking earlier about like inner critic, bad self-talk, this is a song about some of his friends. <laughs> Come knocking at my door, paying me a nightly call. Sorrow shows up early, while worry paces up and down the hall. Fear comes around once a week, always trying to sell me something. And envy brings me flowers from the neighbor's lawn. The visitors come knocking at my door. I'm the map they step upon. The visitors 
Just come knocking at my door. Some for dinner, some for tea. Loneliness can overstay its welcome, but I could use the company. Grief sleeps at my feet next to doubt. Don't have the heart to kick them out, and pity throws me parties now and then. The visitors come knocking at my door. Here they come again. Lord knows they've made my place a mess, but I love them anyway, I guess. Why do the hardest feelings make the easiest guests? Not like trust, what a flake, cancels every plan we make. And courage rings the bell, but then he runs away. And hope means well, but I prefer her brother dread. And joy can be swell, but misery's better in bed. And forgiveness is not invited anymore. Still she sits on my stoop on the roof. Say, I know you're in there, let me in. You've got to come outside sometime. I know you're in there, let me in. You've got to come outside sometime. I know you're in there, let me in. You've got to come outside sometime. Careful who you host. The ones who hurt the worst are the ones you love the most. Thank you. Um, I wrote this song towards the beginning of the 45th presidency. Um, boo. And uh, tonight, I'll dedicate it to the Republican-led House of Representatives. This is called, Where Are the Grown-Ups? <laughs> Bully has taken the playground. The smallest are trembling in fear. Everyone's yelling and shoving, and I'm standing here. I'm waiting for them to come running. Aren't they supposed to arrive? Where are the grown-ups to save the day? Where are the grown-ups to make it okay? Somebody's gotta come clean this mess off the floor. Where are the grown-ups we've been waiting for? Where are the grown-ups? The bully is building a fortress for only his friends at the top. He's slamming the rest into lockers. Please make him stop. I'm looking around for an answer. I thought they'd be here by now. Where are the grown-ups to save the day? Where are the grown-ups to show us the way? Somebody's got to come clean this mess off the floor. Where are the grown-ups we've been waiting for? Where are the grown-ups? Ah! The kid on the lap won't stop crying. She's scared of the man on TV. Her little eyes widen with worry, she turns to me. She's looking around for an answer, and now I have mine. We are the grown-ups 
to save the day. We are the grown-ups. Just make it okay. We're not gonna take this bully shit anymore. We are the grown-ups we've been waiting for. My God, we are the grown-ups. We are the grown-ups. So what are we waiting for? Thank you so much. No. Um, I shouldn't have teased that. That's the only best as far as I know. I need to learn the rest. Next time, I'm playing again March 1st. Come back. Um, uh, so, you know that scene in Titanic? You're, I know, every scene. Never gets old. Happy 25th anniversary to Titanic for those who celebrate. Um, you know, the scene I'm thinking of is like, it's towards the end, like, but like people really die, like ships about to do the this, and people are drowning, and the string quartet is playing, and yeah, yes, I know. And the fries, oh, I love you. <coughs> um, the string quartet is playing, <laughs> and, uh, and, but then they kind of realize, like, they're like, this is futile, like, we're all dying momentarily, we should pack this in, and they, like, walk away, but then the lead guy, like, the viol violinist, like, comes back, and he's like, gentlemen, the minuet and A, or whatever, and like, they're like, oh, yes, and they come back, and they're like, mm, they start to play this beautiful thing, it's like everyone's falling down, and I remember seeing that as a kid, and I was like, oh, the power of music, I was like, it really, <laughs> I don't know, it really stuck with me, I mean, so many things stuck with me, and feel different, like, I mean, like, sweaty hand on carriage, but that, for me, as a kid, that was like a jump scare, <laughs> I was like, is she okay, <laughs> what's wrong, <laughs> um, someone help her, <laughs> um, now I, now I understand what it means. Um, but anyway, the, the string quartet scene, I saw it on TV recently, and like instead of feeling like this beautiful homage to like the power of music and disaster, it just felt really like dark to me. Um, maybe it's from all the like doom scrolling about the planet <laughs> and climate anxiety that I feel. Wow, I really brought the room down. Um, but I don't know if anyone, you know, like when you're just, it's just all the horrible news and it's just got me thinking like what what actually is the role of musicians in the apocalypse so thank you for coming to my ted talk tonight we're going to work this out together but um but it just got me thinking like what what would we actually play when the ship is sinking this is the last song on earth there's only time for one before we're burned up by the sun. The soil is toxic and the water's gone. No more hills left to die on. The smoke's getting bad. Why bother to rehearse? We could be gunners by the second verse. The fire's coming and the flood is near. Pick your poison, the end is here. This is the last song on earth. Hope you got your money's worth. Let's surrender and sing along, cause this is the last song. We ruin the air with all our gassy cars, but the billionaires are safe on Mars. They blasted off before the food ran out, before the plague, yes, before the drought. The warnings were clear, but we ignored the teens. If only we looked up from our screens, we could have stopped it. Couldn't we hope you enjoy your SUV? Cause this is the last song on earth. Yes, we got our money's worth. Throw your hands up and sing along. Cause this is the last song. Let's play until the fuse is blown. Let's take one final bow. If science couldn't save us, then this too won't save us now. This is the last song on earth. Hope you sang a lifetime's worth. Run for cover and sing along. Cause this is the last song on earth. We gave greed to what a birth. Throw your hands up and sing. If this is the last song, let's go down.
all stayed so quiet during that transition. <laughs> um, so I haven't been at Joe's Pub in a while, but I have been in the park at the Delacorte Theater, um, which I love. Yeah. Um, and I've gotten over the last chunk of years to do shows with this incredible thing called Public Works. Maybe there's some Public Works people in the house. Yes. Um, Public Works, much like the accordion, <laughs> has totally changed my life. It's this amazing program the public theater does that brings together hundreds of New Yorkers, uh, partnering with eight incredible community organizations with kids, students, families, veterans, domestic workers, all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds coming together in the park every summer to do these giant, huge Shakespeare musicals for free. Um, I mean, for free for the audience. And it's just all kind of like predicated on the idea of like, the culture belongs to everyone and not just the few rich people who can afford Broadway tickets. And uh, it's amazing and, and uh, yeah, it, we've gotten, to, I've just gotten, I didn't like grow up really going to like synagogue or church or any kind of church community, but that's what public works feels like to me. It just feels like such a like holy home that I get to have here in the city. And what's cool is the two musicals that um, I've written with public works, uh, Twelfth Night and As You Like It, musical adaptations, yeah. Um, I know I said before, you, like I never, you never finish a musical, but I have finished those two. <laughs> <laughs> Feels great. Um, and now like schools and communities are starting to do them around the country, which is so fun and amazing that like our public works kind of spirit is spreading out across the country and the world. Um, and yeah, what I love so much is a lot of students will like tag me in their videos from their performances and I, I'm obsessed with it because for me like nothing before or since mattered more to me than my musical at school or at camp like it was in my life <laughs> um, as theater kids in the audience may know or really too but um, yeah theater kids. Uh, but there's one song they tag me in a lot that just seems to be I, I don't know the one that they've gone down to and the, I've seen some like incredible incredible redi renditions of it and um, so I thought I'd play that tonight and try and like live up to them, honestly, because these like 15 year olds are amazing. <laughs> it's intimidating. Uh, it really is, I'm not kidding. And uh, yeah, this song doesn't really need as much setup as suffrage, you're welcome. Um, but it, you just need to know like unrequited love. I think that's all. I'll not bore you with Shakespeare plots. So just think of a time in your life, maybe it's right now, you felt that way. can tell you anything, my friend, except how I feel about you, cause I know you don't return it, though ain't it obvious, my friend, I'm not myself around you, but I like who I am turning into, cause I you see it is this not love is this not love that I feel for you do you feel it too is this not love is this not love that we're feeling is this not love Spawn and stress like confidence and lamb in lion's clothes. I want to hold you so bad, but I'm not the one you chose. But sometimes your eyes catch mine. I'm not there, think it. Oh, I think you know. Yeah. 
you. Um, this next song I wrote about eight years ago, but it, it took me a long time to write. I was probably writing it for over a year. Uh, it was a re yeah, it was a really really hard song to write, and um, it's called When, and I I just wish for a day where I don't feel the need to play it anymore. <laughs> Another child, another bullet, another unfathomable day, another trigger, another reason to pull it, another unthinkable cliche, another tragic image of violence, a moment of silence, another TV news routine, a solemn leader on a screen. Another family in mourning, another pundit scorning, another finger pointing, another fighting over why he cannot wait, then another dead end debate till it happens again, again. And every time I sit and wonder when, oh, when, oh, when will it Seven seventy or more. She held a sign in one hand, a cane in the other, and she heard us singing when, oh when, and she took the mic and said, oh when, oh when, if not now, then when, oh when, oh when, if not now, then when. I've been marching a long time. Shall I say? 
There's a house in my head under permanent construction. I'm the lone architect of an imaginary house. There's a room for the dark things, the panic and the fuss. There's an attic for the past things that hang over us. There's a room for the elephants, a den for the ghost, a parlor for when we pretend to be hosts. And the light I leave on every night in the blue, cause I There's a house in my head under permanent construction. I'm the sole carpenter of an imaginary house. I'm building the place with sails, wheels, and wings, portable roots, and detachable strings. Get back here and we'll live like movable kings. And new see the light I live on every night till you do. Cause I'll always save a room for you. There will always be a room for you. So come home. Thank you so much. <sighs> Thank you, everybody. I was just saying to someone, like, I don't know anyone who's not going through some kind of rough time right now. <laughs> you know, it's rough. It's here, it's laughing because it's real, <laughs> right? Like, it, the, on something, or it's like, it's been a rough couple years. It has, on so many levels, I'm sure, personally, in so many different ways for people in this room tonight rough in our city, rough in our country. I mean, just, it's only been one month into this year, and as I'm playing when tonight, I'm thinking of just the unimaginable time of loss in the AAPI community and, the, and all the lives lost at Monterey Park and Half Moon Bay. I'm thinking of Tyree Nichols's funeral today and his heinous murder at the hands of police. And just all, as I'm singing, I, I sang like another un unfathomable day and the word unfathomable hit me as I was singing it tonight because I was like, it's, it, what's chilling is it doesn't feel unfathomable. Like uh, we've been forced to fathom these, these atrocities, forced to over and over again, over and over again, year after year, day after day, week after week, these cycles of violence and racism and tragedy and horror and hate. And, and we don't have to live like this and we can't live like this. And Everyone processes these feelings and the grief and the rage and so much more in so many different ways. And everyone takes action in different ways. And I just, if you're someone who gets these news alerts on your phone and you haven't really found, you feel hopeless, you feel afraid, you feel a lot and you wanna take action some way and that's new for you, I just wanna make an offering that um, I'm really proud to be an artist ambassador for two phenomenal organizations that I really think are on the front lines of the movement for a better world in New York and in the country. And they are uh, the NYCLU, <laughs> yeah, and the New York Working Families Party. <laughs> and I love working with these two organizations because both of them, they're not just single issue orgs, like they really cover the gamut and understand that all of these issues and fighting for freedom and justice and dignity of every person uh, are across the board systemically entrenched and they fight for LGBTQ plus justice, immigrant reform, uh, reproductive care, voting rights, due process, racial justice, fight against police violence. All They do them all in so many interconnected ways and the NYCLU fights it uh, in the courts and WFP fights it at the polls and they both fight it in the streets. Um, and so if you're just wanting to get involved, uh, you can go to nyclu.org or workingfamiliesparty.org. They're really easy signups to get on their mailing list. There's action items all the time. 
Uh, and even if you, you're someone who doesn't feel like they have the time or the energy, if you have $5 a month, donate. Because you, you don't need to, we don't need to uh, start over. Like there are people, there are activists who have been in the trenches doing this for decades, decades fighting these fights. And so we really have to follow their lead. You know, and of course there's so many amazing organizations that you could get involved with, but I just want to share those two for me, especially at the NYCLU. Right now there's so much going on around trying to change, fundamentally change policing here in New York. There was supposed to be a hearing to disband one of our most violent police unions a couple weeks ago. The NYPD managed to get it postponed, but it's, it's happening in early March. Again, we really need to hold the city council's feet to the fire to make sure that they do not postpone it again. We cannot let them get away with that again. If you want to talk to me more after, I love to talk about this. And uh, I think that, um, you know, I mean, I, it's, it's, I, I'm passionate about, um, you, you know, organizing and getting together to try and do what we can to, to move the needle on these issues because I do feel that it's possible. So NYCLU, Working Families, um, if you can, if you have it in you to, to sign up and, and take some action, go for it. Um, thanks so much for being here tonight. I, f I feel like I started the night with that loud voice and you all with your very sensitive eating really helped calm me down. <laughs> I'm really excited for my fries. Um, yeah, I'm gonna play here again March 1st. I'm gonna play a bunch of other songs that shows on sale. Yeah, I'd love to see you again. And y'all, yeah, we made it through January. <laughs> I thought that this would be the year The year that finally did me in And all my daily demons Would catch up with me And the times would grow too tough to live within But then I rub my tired eyes and to my sublime surprise, I felt the melted snow. And what do you know? I made it through another winter. I made it through another winter. I made it through another winter. I made it through. I made it through another winter. I made it through another winter I made it through So maybe somehow I'll make it through summer too You tell yourself you've had enough something only other people do but you will you just repeat the same mistake I remember you've been here before and my friend I'm pretty sure you climbed out of the wreck and guess what you made it through another winter you Make it through summer too. Somehow you walk, somehow you speak, somehow you make it through another week. Somehow you help, somehow you hurt, somehow you fall face first in dirt. Somehow you care, somehow you cry, somehow you try, you try.
make it through summer too. We'll make it through summer too. We'll make it through summer too. We'll make it through another summer, yeah. We'll make it through. We'll make it through summer too. Thank you so much. I want to say a huge thank you to Steve up there and Jeanan and uh, Jesse, the most incredible staff and crew at Joe's Pub. I'm telling you, New York needs this place. There's nowhere like it. I feel so lucky and honored every time I get to step on the stage. Um, and thank you to this amazing wait staff for dealing with all of my quiet ballads and, and planning things. Please give them a huge tip. They're fucking awesome. Um, and this is a drinking song, so, you know, give it. My fries are so soon. <laughs> now preachers and teachers and scholarly brains have tried to provide a truth that explains why shit can go so badly. Well, I've had a helping or two of the blues, but I go back for seconds and thirds because I choose to stomach sorrow gladly. For I have a theory that might sound crass, but to that hypothesis, I raise a glance. Here's to the chaos, the heartache and strain. Three cheers for agony, a toast to the pain. Hats off to everything that leaves a scar. Though I'm not religious, I've always believed There must be a weirdo up there who conceives This magic, tragic planet And so I'll forgive them for adding the parts That savage and ravage our bones and our hearts And harden souls to granite for when at the end of a harrowing day you see who shows up at your doorstep to say, here's to the chaos, the heartache and strain, three cheers for agony, a toast to the pain, hats off to everything that leaves a scar. to the hoping when the odds are a joke three cheers for foolish dreams when everything's broke hats off to every close but no cigar here's to the chaos heartache and strain Three cheers for agony, a toast to the pain, hats off to it. 